Here's five things you must know before building a schoolie. Three years ago, we bought this bus with dreams of traveling the country and exploring the US while we were still young. We aimed to save money by converting it for around 35 grand, and we wanted to finish it within three years. But it turns out, we were way off. Which brings us to our first point. Number one, it will take more money and more time than you think. So we weren't too far off on our timing part. We thought it would take us two to three years to finish building the bus, and it took us three to four years. So not too bad. Eh, not great. <laughs> <laughs> but we were only working on the bus on the weekends, and we were paying for it as we went. So that's why it took us longer than we thought. Plus, we're not experienced builders at all, so it took us a while to figure out how to do all this stuff. And we're young. We don't have a lot of money. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> so within the past three and a half, four years that we have been working on the bus, we have spent a lot more money than expected. Just for the EcoFlow, which is our power system, and the repairs that we've done in the last couple months, just that stuff alone is $25,000. And we've definitely put more than $10,000 into building the bus, so it is safe to say that we have definitely soared past $35,000 in the last three and a half years. So the point is, you will probably be spending a lot more than you think you will. So be prepared for that. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on to point number two, you need to find the right bus. Before you dive into just buying a bus because you want to convert it into a schoolie, you gotta think it through, think about the size you want. Yeah, so you've probably thought about this before, like you, you may, maybe you want a full size bus, or if you're like us and you don't wanna drive around a 40 foot bus, you probably want a shorter one. And you gotta think about if you want a flat nose or a dog nose. The flat nose is cool because you get more interior space, but one thing to think about is flat noses are usually more expensive to work on uh, for the mechanics because it's harder to get to all the components of the engine. So that's one, one thing to think about if you're getting a flat nose bus. But the most important thing you need to think about when buying your schoolie is the engine. I don't know a lot about engines, but I would recommend going to Chuck Cassidy's YouTube channel. He has been building schoolies for a long time he has a video that I'll link to in the description below about how to find the right engine type. That is the most important thing when buying a schoolie. Number three, you need to make sure that you have a place to park your bus. A lot of neighborhoods, you're not able to just park your bus in the driveway and keep it there for an extended period of time. So if you have like extra land somewhere or a bigger yard that you are able to park it in, that would be ideal. Even though we got lucky and my grandma has a pretty big piece of land for us to keep the bus on, we still had a couple complaints from our neighbors because we were making so much noise over the years. If you don't have anywhere to park your bus, then I have seen people just park it at like small businesses with big lots in the back um, that they're not using or even um, I've seen people go to school bus yards and park their bus there to do their build. Number four is figuring out all the legal stuff including insurance and registration. For us this proved to be a struggle and took a lot longer than we anticipated. Oh yeah just like everything else did. <laughs> we live in Illinois it's gonna be different in every state but it was kind of a pain in Illinois. There's a lot of back and forth calls. Uh, even though they have a whole system set up for converted vehicles now in Illinois, it was still a lot of back and forth, a lot of talking on the phone, and a lot of trial and error to try and get a registration. For insurance, we got kind of lucky and we were able to go through State Farm. Um, that's not gonna be the case for everyone, but I already had car ins insurance through State Farm and luckily um, it worked out to work on the bus too. Depending on the length and weight of your bus, you may need to get a CDL or air brake certification. So I actually went to the DMV to get my air brake certification because we have air brakes, but it turns out because the bus does not weigh over 26,000 pounds, you do not need to have a CDL to drive it, which means you don't need an air brake endorsement. 
And the person at the DMV told me that that is a nationwide law. We'll see if that is true. <laughs> Another important note for legal stuff is to get insurance when you drive the bus home. I think you'll need to get commercial insurance through some company, I'm not sure. Um, this is something that we didn't actually do because for our understanding, we thought that we would have insurance for 48 hours after uh, we purchased the bus, just like a car, but turns out that's not the case and you need to get insurance when driving the bus home. Last thing for legal stuff, I would say that if you're thinking about doing some sort of conversion, whether it's a van or a schoolie, it is definitely easier to insure and register a van than trying to do that for a school bus. Lastly, but not least, point number five, you need to maintain your engine. Yeah. If you take anything away from this video, it is this. Yes. We're learning this the hard way right now. <laughs> for us, we've had our bus parked at Zach's grandma's house, is just in the yard for the past three years and have not taken it out on any trips on the road at all because it was not insured or registered until a couple of months ago. Yes. So this is the tough thing about having a schoolie because um, it's illegal to drive it on the street while you build it because you don't have license plate or insurance. So what happened to us was, as we just found out this week, our gas tank has um, been condensating and rusting on the inside, which means there's metal going through our fuel system. So right now we have to uh, replace our fuel tank and all our fuel injectors, which is a lot of money. And we also got a cracked radiator and our bus was not able to do a regeneration. If you don't know what that means, look it up. A lot of diesel vehicles need to do a regen. So my advice to you would be to spend the extra money and go through the extra effort to insure and register the bus as a commercial vehicle before you finish all of your renovations. That way you can still take the bus out on the road, uh, make sure you're changing the fluids every year, and just doing everything you can to maintain the engine, because that is the heart of the vehicle and what we are trying to do with the schoolie. And it's probably the most expensive thing too, if you don't maintain it. All that said, staying committed to this project over the past three to four years has been one of the biggest challenges. We have put everything we've had into this bus, all of our time, money, blood, sweat, tears, you name <laughs> it, it's in that bus. And honestly, it's been one of the most challenging experiences that I've ever had, but we, I would say we have learned a ton from it. And it's also not for everybody and that's okay. Yeah. So just know that it is super challenging physically, mentally, emotionally, like it will get you, mm -hmm. it will get you. So yeah. just be ready for things not to go your way and, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just kind of roll with the punches, take it as you can and just put everything you can into it. It's hard, but yeah. if you really want it, you can definitely do it. It just be aware it is challenging. <laughs> yeah. But that being said, um, we definitely don't regret it at all. And I'm saying that as I just found out that we have to pay $8,000 for the fuel injector and the fuel tank. So, I mean, but we're, we're really looking forward to being able to travel in the bus full time. I mean, that is just such a dream. And we've been living in it for a month or so now and um, we love it. It is so cozy in there. It's just our own little space that can literally move anywhere we want it. So how can life get better than that? <laughs> <laughs> One day we'll get there. Yeah. I know we will. And we've been saying this for a long time that we can't wait to start traveling. It's going to happen this year. Yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yes. So if you guys want to watch us on that journey and see us finally get on the road, then you can subscribe and check out our 
other videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.